This is Ben Heller backstage at a steel pier. Uh, oh, speak up, young man. This is timid about this thing. This is Ben Heller backstage at the pier, the steel pier. That with that. That's very good. Now get your money that, back up and get out of here. With that. <laughs> <laughs> Victor Moon. Vic, no, Victor Moon. Bing Crosby. No, Frank Sinatra could be Hans. Well, Frank, then. how are you, Frank? Wonderful, man. Wonderful. Nice to see you here. Good to see you again. It's always every year I see you. Never before each year. Never. Why don't you come out to visit me once in a while? Well, who's got time and who's, who's got money? Let you out of that music store. <laughs> Frank. I had a whole big speech here to start off there to say, welcome, I was going to give you a key, I was going to give you a corned beef sandwich, a cup of tea, or something <laughs> to help you out with. I don't know what the heck to say. Uh, well, I'll start off this way. First of all, I know that you're such a worldwide traveler. This guy, you've been jumping from coast to, to ocean to How continent. I can't keep up with myself anymore. Where are you now, Frank? Tell me where. When I look at my schedule. <laughs> I see saltwater taffy, so I must be in Atlantic City. Yes, the land of salt. You get any to cut the fit to kiss her? Not yet, no. You must get them. Sure. Uh, listen, about these trips across country, where have you been? And tell us about them. Well, the reason that I've been traveling so much uh, uh, between New York and California was uh, uh, trying to get this television series of ours going. I had to deal with people uh, who were working in California and then check back in New York with CBS to find out whether they agreed and so on and so forth. And uh, I did record dates back and forth. And as far as my trip uh, overseas was concerned, as you know, I played the Palladium and then did a series of one-nighters around England itself. And I visited Paris and had a little fun. And... Uh, then I came home, so here I am. So look, so before you came home, though, you met a fellow from, uh, what is his name, the Duke of Edinburgh. Oh, yes, a very nice, he's the new father. He's the, he's the, he's the uh, Prince Philip, he's a new father. And were you pacing up and down with him, too? As soon as I walked in, he was walking up and down, and I said, do you mind if I join you? Because just the other night, I was pacing the floor with Ted Shaw. <laughs> so I said he wanted a, a boy, because he had two daughters, and uh, maybe I was lucky because they had a boy. And I said, I understand you want a girl. And I said, maybe we good luck. And sure enough, what happened? They had a girl. You know <laughs> what I mean, Ben? I got you like anything. Don't kid with me, Sam. <laughs> I know that. Say, uh, Frank, tell us about this uh, record that you're going to make. What is called a double-faced record for the playing field fund. Oh, here yeah, now. Come on, you Hey, don't talk English, Dad. <laughs> what are you doing to me? <laughs> no, I did make a... I made a suggestion to the uh, playing fields fund, which is like a group uh, that we have here. Oh, no, here they call it Playgrounds. Uh, they have a, they got a situation like I guess every nation has, uh, with the kids, keeping the kids off the street. They get hit by cars and they get in trouble and so on and so forth. So I made a suggestion that I would like to contribute something to the British because they were so nice to me. Really well, got over there. So many presents. So I suggested to them that I make a record for my two English composers. They, could, they would sell it over there and all the proceeds would go to the fund. And they were very pleased with the idea. And we're doing a song by a young composer named uh, Carol Coates. I don't know whether he's related to, to the Coates, to, to the uh, conductor. conductor and the yeah. composer, but he's got a great song called London by Night, which is also a good omen because the song con contains London in the title. It's a wonderful love song. Yeah. And the other song is written by the great Ivo Novello, which I'm sure we all heard about, uh, called If Only She'd Look My Way, which is also a charming song. So they'll be the two tunes. Well, that was a very, very nice gesture, Frank. Well, it was only something in return for their graciousness when, while I was staying in London. Well, you're a gracious guy. Just to get serious for a moment, Frank, I hear that your mother is... Uh, She's on the mend now, Ben. Well, I'm She's, glad to hear yeah, that. Yeah, she was pretty sick. She was in the hospital for about four weeks and with a kind of a thing. It's a big, long mishmash, so I won't go into that. But uh, I'm so pleased and happy that she was... I was quite worried, very frankly, very worried because of a certain kind of surgery they had to do, but fortunately they didn't have to do it, so well, she's I'm fine. Glad of that. And I'd like to thank everybody who's listening, uh, because she's had so many letters and cards from all over the country that I'm, I'm, I know that she got plenty from her home state here in Jersey. And I'd like to thank everybody on her behalf for writing to her and get, uh, sending her those nice uh, cards and letters. Well, that's real nice. Listen, Frank, about two weeks ago, an old boss of yours, well, he's not so old, Tommy Dorsey was in. The Smiling Irish. The Smiling Irish. Tommy Dorsey. So uh, we started to talk. Now. Sentimental gentleman. The sentimental. Sentimental. You know, you know. Listen. So, so, so listen, so listen already, so don't run away. So uh, we start to talk about, the, you know, the different, uh, shall we say, characters who had uh, worked and started off uh, with a sentimentalist. Yeah, like And uh, uh, he started, well, wait, we'll get to them later on. We're talking about you. So uh, he says, um, Frank, 
After all, what is there to say about Frank? It's been done innumerable times. Anything I would say would be superfluous. Superfluous. That's Knock pretty good. Knock off those you can three, stay now for those a while. three syllable jobs like anything <laughs> superfluous. I could say it again if I had to. You can't. So he started, he says, nothing to say, and he went on for an hour and a half, the whole program. He was on for an hour and a half, and that's all he did was talk about it. It was really a very, very nice gesture on the sentimental gentleman. Well, he, he, he really has been wonderful. I've heard from many, many guys who have this, this jockey shows that every time he has appeared on it, he's done nothing but talk about me, and, and uh, I've tried to reciprocate whenever the subject comes up because I really sincerely, from my heart, think that There'll never be a trombone player or a musician who knows his instrument like Darcy knows at home. He's it's just terrific. at the end of the world. I went to see him at the Astor a couple of weeks ago uh -huh. in New York, and he just knocked me out. He's I got up and sang a few songs with the band. I sat on the next to the brass like he used to sit <laughs> Big kick, but I ran right away. Listen, I thought he'd call the bus and go on the road. <laughs> Watch out. Oh, the bus. I'll tell you about that. Well, um, you know, uh, we're talking, so we started to talk about Zig, so... Uh, you remember, Zig came down here when he did the light-up show That's with you. Right, he came yeah. down here for a weekend. That's right. So you know how Zig, a nice philosophical type of fellow. <laughs> so we came down here at the Strand Hotel. So we also say he's a tremendous trumpet player. Well, that is beside the point. But you know, I want to tell you how we uh, really carried on that weekend. So nice and relaxed, we, we sat down on the porch at the Strand Hotel mm -hmm. and uh, discussed current, current events and Canadian clubs. And uh, some more current events. It was a lovely weekend. Really had a nice least. weekend. I think he uh, floated in for the program. I saw him, I remember, on Monday afternoon. He looks well. <laughs> Thanks a lot for taking care of him. I don't think he could see the band that day. <laughs> Listen, are you going to have any Italian flying sauces before you leave? <laughs> <laughs> you mean pizza? Sure. <laughs> Italian flying sauces. You know that we got an idea about Columbia Records. You know I make Columbia Records. I've heard Well, we got an idea that we're going to make them on pizza. So if you don't like them, you eat them, see? If you don't like what they sound like, you eat them up. You reheat them. That's all. That's a good idea? Yeah, very good. Frank, you got to tell us a little about your uh, television deal. Though. Well, I'll tell you... Uh, Wait, take a glass of tea then. first, then. Pour well, out the we tea. Got time. We'll pour out the Who's tea. Who's this guy who always would have poured out the tea? Show. Yeah, pour out the tea. We like liniment? Uh, liniment? We like <laughs> some yeah, liniment. Give me, a, give me a glass of tea in a cup, Dale. Without this is a charming interview. Yes, having. you know it. You the know FCC it. must call up <laughs> <Of course>. the <laughs> day that you run this. Of course, of course. Let me tell you about the television show. Ben. Go ahead, go ahead. Make uh, the tea dark. Make the tea dark, there. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be on CBS uh, every Saturday night from 9 to 10 Eastern time. Uh, we follow the Ken Murray show. And uh, I so far have signed as a... As we're trying to build a steady so-called family on this show. Mm -hmm. So far we've signed Ben Blue, whom I think is one of the great pantomimists of the world. Good. And pantomimist. Nice. Like that yeah, means yeah. mugging. It means? means like making with the faces. Oh. Like, you see what I mean? See, if we we're only on television, we'd be nothing. You know, that? <laughs> you know this <laughs> like anything. <laughs> anyway, we got Ben Blue. Blue. We got a new group of kids called the Moon Mists. Four boys and a girl. They're youngsters and they sing wonderful arrangements and they animate songs. They do little dances with the tunes, which should be just great for television. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, for writers, we have, I don't know, well, it won't make much difference because these kids never get credit anyway, but they will on our show. We got uh, Paul Dudley. Paul Dudley's going to supervise and, and coordinate the entire show. Very good. We got Harry Crane to do comedy, write the comedy, and we got a couple of kids that used to write for Edgar Bergen, and I understand he's a little bit burned at the moment, but I think he'll get over that. Two kids called yeah. Wedlock and Snyder, great writers. He'll get happy. I think so. Listen, so we'll buy him another dummy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. Listen, I don't see Manny Sachs around here. Manny Sachs will be here. In a, in a couple of hours or maybe tomorrow morning. Is he carrying a carload of Kleenex with him? <laughs> he's got a hay fever time. Oh, He's got Kleenex, he's got uh, uh, Fedrin and all that stuff. Is he got stuff here? Dramamine. So this is Manny and, Sachs. Uh, and, 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 and Halva, see? Then Halva. That's a new bit. They has he got the Dramamine. Uh, has he got the two flavors there? Halva and walnut. Good. See, walnut, no, walnut and jamamine is in the halva. That's good. And this will all we stop We ought to get sneeze. a piece of this halva business. Do you, you think know? it's bad? <laughs> Turkish delight. Where are we at? What else are we going to talk about? What the heck else are we going to talk Hurry about? Hurry up. They're yeah, reaching for records, their hats. They're reaching for their new, hats. New records. New records. Yeah, we've got to talk about the new records. All course. right. We talk about the new records. The new records. The new Columbia records, should we say? Well, Columbia records, of course. Uh, you make for other, are there other records? Well, there are some, you know, black and white, right. uh, Discovery Records, a few, few companies. Drink the tea, drink the, drink the tea already. <laughs> Ooh, what a tone. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> that so wasn't me, folks, that was him. <laughs> uh, he has to cover up yet. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's see. We got, the, uh, we got a new one now that's moving pretty good called, uh, uh, to excuse the expression, Good Night Irene. Hey, that's a nice tune. 
You want right. to bet? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's yeah, pretty cute. You want to sing a lot, lot You want to sing a lot of songs like that. You got anything? Oh, don't hold your breath. You got anything from the Peruvian hit parade? The Peruvian hit parade. Uh, one called Blinden. Blinden. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, written by Julie Stein. Good, good. <laughs> what happened to Chaplin? <laughs> <laughs> He's playing for Phil Silver someplace. <laughs> but Good Night Irene seems to be a big success, along with the other labels who, who have recorded it. And um, also coming up, we have, uh, coming out, I should say, we have a song from a new Crosby picture called Life is So Peculiar that I think it's a rhythm tune. It's a cute little novelty song that I think you'll enjoy hearing, I hope, anyway. Well, you know this. And uh, we got a lot of jazz things that, that I'd like you to watch for, Ben. Uh, I made them with George Saravo uh, mm -hmm. some months ago. Tunes like uh, Lover, but but bright, good ja jump tempos, both to listen to as, as, a, as a vocals and to dance to. Good. Uh, Blue Heaven, as Don't you know, is already as fast out. as Gene Krupa's record. Almost, almost <laughs> no as fast, kidding. yeah, almost as fast. Yeah, give us four bars fast. Okay, that's all. Brother, <laughs> when I'm near you, oh my God. Do, do, do. that's hey, kind of tempo. Oh, oh, oh. I'll leave quietly. I'm okay. packing, boss. And uh, we did uh, When You're Smiling, uh, The Continental. Uh, gee, I can't think. We did Eight Sides, The Wonderful Side. Good, that's so good. That's a little we, different. That's that, what I well, like that we will have to watch out for. That is very, very good. Now, next what week, I think I'm recording with Frank Crummett. You know the guy in Julia Sanderson? No, too? Frank Crummett, yes. And yes. Irene Beasley. We're going to have a little do, bit, you see. Why don't you do and a And Dad is driving in good, the good, country. Good. <laughs> why don't you do something with Ukulele Ike? Ukulele Ike? We got a new deal on Terry Ready. Botkin. You hear Barry Oh, Barry Botkin? yeah, he's got a record. Yeah, he's got a thing. Uh, uh, yeah, he's got uh, a thing. Hey. <laughs> it's ukulele. What do you want? <laughs> I used to play the ukulele. Did you ever know that? Yeah. Oh, on the beach at Asbury Park, I was a smash man. Really? Kid. Yeah. I you was know, never let there anymore after that season. Of you, know, you know how many chords you know? Fast. About eight chords, I guess. Good, good. Nothing good. diminished, you nothing could, fancy. You, well, you could do five or two. Uh, oh, yeah. Who's well, sorry good. now? Good, well, that's good. That's good. That's nice. To nothing yeah. really. I can get you a party tomorrow <laughs> night if you're not busy. Well, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to do an Italian wedding tomorrow oh, yeah? night. Oh, yeah? Yes. Hey, listen, let's Get paid about off in confetti and pizzas. Confetti and pizzas? You mean at a time? What are we going to talk about? Well, let us talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to talk about? He says that. Please, please, don't rush me. <laughs> Say, we were talking about a disc jockey deal there. You, so I heard you say that it isn't really a disc jockey deal. On the radio, you mean? Yeah. No, it's not really a disc, jo disc jockey deal. It's, uh, it's We're going to have a, a kind of a uh, audience interview kind of show. You know, we want to we want to do a show. We haven't yet decided what kind or what the gimmick will be, but a show that 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 ha that's connected with the audience where we can talk to people and find out cute things about them, and, and we can have a lot of fun that way. I like to talk to people. And I think we'll work out something that'll be very entertaining, you know? Good. If it's not, uh, I can see myself back at the London Palladium after a few weeks. That's not bad. Do they no, know? it's all right. They love me in London and Peoria, <laughs> too. Listen, uh, Frank, uh, I was just thinking of a little idea on this disc jockey show. If you make out all right, mm -hmm. you see? I'm listening. You listen. can come back here in the summertime. I will need a replacement for my show. You know, oh, this, this, you go on vacation. Yeah, yeah what yeah, you mean? You see? So, I mean, if you right. want to come down on Saturday I'll tell you morning, what, man. Yeah, what? Uh, right. Don't call us. We'll call you. you Good. Know. I'm glad you to hear your that. name with the girl. Yeah. And uh, she'll call you if we need you. This okay? Very... <laughs> wait, wait. I asked you to... <laughs> You're such a great guy. Isn't this a wonderful You know thing? that. Well, I don't know what else. Hey, Frank, you got to tell me one little thing. I'm not, on all of these guys, i got... Hey, excuse me. What did I say there? Take it on off. all of these things. <laughs> on all of these things, he said. Uh, you have had some experiences, uh, not kidding aside, uh, either uh, something that was uh, touching or a real funny deal. Do you know of any one thing that... You mean in the music out? business? In the music business, since you've been around. Well, let's, uh, we'll take a little time, I imagine, to come up with one. Uh, well, either a funny one, then. Well, I, the only funny one I can remember is uh, to get back to Tommy Dorsey for a minute. I remember <laughs> once... Uh, we were going. We were playing in Philadelphia, and uh, uh, we had a fellow who now works for me, who was working for the band. His name is Bobby Burns. He yes. used to be the manager of the band. You remember Bobby Burns? Yeah, yeah sure. And uh, uh, we were playing Philadelphia, and Ziggy and I were in charge of the band because Tommy drove down and mm -hmm. by his car. So we all put we put the band on the train, and uh, we got down to Philadelphia, and we had a half hour to go for the radio program. We used to do a show on Saturdays from four to five, mm -hmm. and. Uh, we waited for the instruments, and it seems that Burns put them on the express to Washington, yeah, you see? That's good. And uh, 
I can't tell you the, the punchline of the story, but I, because uh, it would end radio for all times. When Dorsey got a hold of Burns, that was the end of the world. I didn't tell you what he said to him. But to me, that's one of the funny incidents that, that, that uh, remains in my mind about putting the instruments on the wrong train. Another time, right here outside the Steel Pier, this yeah. is good because of it being Atlantic City, uh, we were loading the bus after we got through playing here on a Sunday night, and a truck came to take out some, some uh, crops off the, off the, uh, out of the theater here, and he asked the bus driver, could he move a few feet? And Burns was packing the bus with the driver, and he had the instruments in the street, and he ran over all the instruments. <laughs> it's not funny, but it was funny at the time. <laughs> and everything looked like knives and forks when we took them out of the cases, you know. That's a true story. And Ziggy's trumpet looked real beautiful. Looked yes. like a cookie. <laughs> Very nice. Well, it looks like our time is drawing to a close, as the poet would say. As so, he says. as he says. So, which poet then? Hey, poet. <laughs> That'd be a poet. Well, it has to sound good. I knew I'd get so, it. So, uh, <laughs> right. you want me to think that fast? Frank, thank you very, very much for allowing me to bend your good ear this long, and I want to wish you the best of luck always, Frank, in everything that you do. Same for you, Ben. Come back again real soon, yeah. Wish, Amy boy. We'll try. Thanks thank again you. for having me on the show. Well, bye.